No, I want God to be proud of me. Amen. You know, Here we is. are for the one-year Bible study, and uh, everything we say and do, Shannon, is for God's glory. So thank you for being obedient this morning. She had a, a testimony and prayer request for somebody she witnessed to yesterday, and that's what it's all about. So we're June 29th. We're in 2 Kings uh, chapters 15 and 16. And then even in the Acts, we're in Acts 19. Um, a few years ago, today's reading is what I would have classified as a little dry, maybe. Hard for me to read. Um, hard for me to see purpose in. Um, and I just want to encourage you. That's why we do this. This, this one-year Bible study, reading all the way through the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs every day, to read all the way through the Bible start to finish in one year's time is to get to know our father in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God so God is the word and the word is God there's no separation so we do not ever want to let the written word replace God speaking to us it's it's relationship he desires it's he doesn't des desire us just reading words on a piece of paper. This is a gift from him. And the gift he gave us is him. And yet it's not to replace the abiding in that he so desires in the oneness with us, him and us and us and him and that procreation that's constantly taking place and making us more and more like Christ. But I can't begin to put into words the value of the gift that he gave us. Even on days like today, we read about the kings and over and over again in today's reading, I, I didn't count how many kings we read about, I don't know, maybe 10, I'm guessing. Out of 10, only two did what was right in God's eyes, and those two didn't eliminate the idols from the high places, so it means that they didn't fully uh, do everything that God wanted them to do. There were still idols. They still allowed idols. Um, in their kingdoms, we read about one that only had a one-month reign. Um, all of the rest of them did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, like verse uh, 28, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from the sins of his fathers. And so <clears throat> um, in reading it, it's, it's like, Okay, do I really have to read this, Lord? Is there a reason? I just want to remind you that every T that's crossed, every I that is dotted, every word written is inspired by God Almighty. And there is a purpose for it. And today, one of the things that helps me so much is um, everywhere you look, whether it's Facebook, whether it's on television, whether it's on the radio, if you go to the coffee shop in your local community, if you go to the grocery store in your local community, if you sit down with a group of people today and have conversations with them, it's going to turn to, oh, how bad things are. What is this world coming to? It's just, it's the worst of the worst. We've never seen times like this. The end is near. I mean, it's just doom and gloom. You know, People don't even know who they're going to vote for. Who is there to vote for? There's nobody to vote for. We just had an election here uh, yesterday. And, and, and then we read about historical texts like what we're reading today. And, and I just want you to think for a moment. You know, Israel was the chosen land. Israel is the one that God created a king for at the request of the people. And starting with David, who was the man after God's own heart, was Israel is God's chosen people. He blessed them. And he blessed them abundantly through the success of David. And then when Solomon came along, David's son, he asked for wisdom. And he was given wisdom unlike anybody before, then, or ever since has ever had and Solomon was also the richest ruler in the world. That means the kingdom was the richest. There, there was none greater than Solomon. We're talking about a blessed land, a blessed people. I don't know about y'all, but I live in a blessed land. I live in a land that was created because of 
a desire to have open worship for the Lord, a desire to be able to carry the Bible anywhere we wanted to go. I, I live in a land that was created out of our forefathers' desire to be able to have open assembly and openly worship the one true God. Um, I live in a blessed land with blessed people, and I live in the most prosperous land in the country because of the blessing of God. That's where I live. But you look back over the kingdoms and story after story after story, the leader of that country did exactly what I just read, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. God's blessing wasn't on that king. And, and when we have a, 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 a leader who does evil in the sight of the Lord, the blessings get withheld, uh, and I'll never fully understand that, uh, what happens in the spiritual realm. I'm not talking about the physical realm when we elect evil rulers over us. But my point is, kingdom after kingdom after kingdom after kingdom after kingdom, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. We even read in today's reading about a king who openly sacrificed his own son. Openly. Mm. Now, when is the last time you've had a ruler, a dictator, or a president who was so evil that he openly sacrificed his son. I, I've not lived it. I've not lived that. And yet we want to believe that these are the worst times. Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. So what today's reading did for me today, the day after an election, um, this is not a political statement. I, I, it, it matters not which way those elections went yesterday. It matters not which way the elections are going to go in November as far as our spiritual kingdom we reside in because the Bible promises us that not one person is put into authority but by the power of God. The Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun and we live in his kingdom under his protection, under his reign, under his grace, under his mercy. And as bad as it seems to be in America today, I'm sitting in here in this wonderful office building that God supernaturally put before us to come in here and, and run a godly business in openly. I got Bibles all over the place in here. You open the door and anybody's likely to say, God bless you when you walk into this retail site on downtown Sky Took, Oklahoma. And I don't have to have fear of persecution for that. They haven't come in and arrested me because I openly have um, Jesus Christ as the center of this business. And yet we want to say that there's no hope. We want to say, where is the world going to? Oh, it's just going to go to hell in a handbasket. I don't think so. And that's what today's reading did for me. There's nothing new under the sun. As bad as things appear on the surface, and we just come off of one of the worst um, crashes in the stock market in a long time over the last few days. The stock market fell. I've had phone calls from people that's worried that they've lost everything uh, in what's happened in the market the last few days. And, and we've never been under a ruler who's openly sacrificed his son. There is hope. And, and there's nothing that's happening that's surprising God. Are there things that are happening that disappoints God or saddens him? It goes against the very nature of who God is, yes. Absolutely. But he, he knew, he knew there is no time with God. He, there is no beginning. There is no end. It, he, there's nothing going on that's surprising God. And there's nothing going on that should cause any of us to live in fear and anxiety over the future. God is our source. We've got to get that. God is our source. He is the one that makes a way for us. And, and no, he's not going to tell you what the next week looks like, what the next month looks like. He's not going to tell you what the next 12 months looks like or the next year or the next year or the next year. He's going to say, I give you enough grace for today. My mercies are new every day. The joy of the Lord is, is your strength. And he's going to tell you, this is the day I made. Will you rejoice in it? And he's going to tell you, everything is okay and as it should be today. Today. 
we'll get through today and he tells you let tomorrow worry about itself tomorrow and then and then how do we do that how do we do that we catch ourselves letting these thoughts overwhelm us we catch ourselves focusing on the wrong things and the psalms tells us for it is good to sing praises to our god for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting i know the last few days as the readings in the kings and in the acts hasn't been quite as full of the revelation and inspiration that I've been getting the weeks prior, that one of the things God's pointing out to me through the Psalms, he's speaking to me through the Psalms now, is he's showing me how lacking my praise life is. He's showing me how lacking my worship is of him. I want every breath I breathe to be a worship to him. And here's the deal. I cannot be praising him and be worried at the same time. I can't. I can't be worshiping him and have anxiety. In the moments that anxiety overtakes me and I'm so caught up in fear, you can bet I haven't been praising him. There's a reason why the theme is day after day after day after day. Praise him, for it's good to sing praises to our God. The Lord builds you up. He gathers the outcasts of our land. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. He's named every star just as he's named every one of us. He knew our names before we were ever born. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts out the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. When's the last time you just broke out in song? And, and a song of praise and worship. When's the last time? I, I mean, we cannot be depressed and be praising God. We cannot uh, uh, have anxiety and stress and, and have a nervous breakdown at the same time that we are praising God, at the same time that we're being grateful. It's why a grateful journal is so powerful to us because, you know, oh, woe is me. My world's so bad, and yet I'm grateful for this, and I'm grateful for that. It, it's two opposing forces, and which one's the most powerful? Well, God answers that question. Which one's the most powerful? Which one has the ability to overtake us? Which one has the power to overtake the other one? The darkness always has to flee the light. Always. Always. Praise Him. Praise Him. Acknowledge who he is throughout your day. You're having trouble with depression. Uh, you can't make it through the day without having negative thoughts, without um, a sense of doom and gloom about you. Praise him. Praise him. Read the Psalms. Make the Psalms your praise. Read his word over and over and over again. His delight is not in the strength of the horse. His, his delight is not in your strength. It's in your weakness he's made strong. That's what the Bible says. <clears throat> Nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. It's not what your legs are doing or where your legs are taking you or the strength and the power that's in your leg, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, who will praise his name and those who hope in his steadfast law. Praise will feed the hope that's inside of you. Worship will feed that uh, hope that is lying dormant inside of you. We don't have to be depressed. We have the powers to overcome and cast out that darkness in our life. Proverbs 18, 4 and 5. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. So we've just been given wisdom. We've just over the last few days been given the insight how to overcome the negativity in our life. And it's through the mouth. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. What does that mean? Deep waters. The words of my mouth are deep waters. It means that the deepest, deepest inside of me is what bubbles out of this mouth. And if, the, if what's bubbling out of this mouth is, oh, I don't know what the economy is going to do. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to get laid off. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen to my kids. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen to my neighbor. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen with that medical report. Then the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. And we can turn that around and we can change what those deep waters are when we start changing our words. 
thank you, Father, that all is as it should be. I praise you just for who you are. You are the great I am. There's never been anyone before you or after you that can even step into your shadow, oh, Father. I bless you. I, I call your name holy. I declare that your land is holy. I praise you, Jesus. I mean, if all you do is just simply say the words, I praise you, that's power. The, the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. When we get that wisdom inside of us, it can't help but come out. It can't help but come out. It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the righteous of the justice. So praise God. I'm praising him today. I'm praising him for you. I'm thanking him that you guys come on to these telecons with me, and we'll chat soon.